Just for um, anyone who doesn't know your work or doesn't know what we're talking about, do you want to give a brief explanation on what electroculture is? Yeah, so what, what, what electroculture is, is you're basically placing wood and copper antennas. That's the easiest way to do it. You can take a piece of wood, wrap it with a piece of copper, and place it into your garden. You can make big ones. You can make little ones. You can make toothpicks wrapped in copper. You can, you know, to help your sprouting. You can do it in just about anything. But what you're doing is you're harnessing the atmospheric antenna, or I'm sorry, the atmospheric energy that's all around us. Right. You look at these old world buildings, they used to have antennas all over them. Those were harnessing the atmospheric energy that's all around us. And when you're placing these antennas into your soil or into your garden, to your farm, to your indoor plants, to your basement, wherever it may be, you're starting to harness that atmospheric energy. And you'll start to notice that your plants will start growing faster. They'll start uh, becoming more frost resistant, heat resistant. They'll not need as much water right? The soil will actually function the way it's supposed to, so they won't need as much water. And then the other magical thing is with the, your, with the plants, you're helping, to, you're helping to boost the sap of the plants, right? The sap is the blood of the plants, and these antennas can help boost all the plants in which that, are, that you're planting so that you start to increase the sap. And the, the, the way that the, the I'm sorry, you, let me start all over. You're helping the sap of the plants, which is the blood of the plants. You're, you're helping it move, right? A lot of our plants are very stagnant. They're the trees and everything. Like you see one side of a tree looks like it's not doing so well. And you see the other side of the tree, it's doing very well. Reason being is the sap is flowing on this side. The electrical conductivity is flowing on this side. This side, it's turned off. So when you're placing these copper antennas into your soil, you're turning back on the electrical conductivity of the earth and your gardens, your farms, and everything around you. And this was all discovered back in the 1910s, 20s, and 30s, and 40s, when three different people were showing this, which were Justin Cristo Flo, Victor Schauberger, and George Lakofsky. They were all the kings of electroculture at that time because they were doing all these different experiments and showing all these beautiful results and getting just tremendous results for all different types of plants. But this information was forgotten over time. And it's, you know, I, I always talk about this because World War II was a reset, right? A lot of this information yeah. was lost during World War II. And when it came to the natural ways of being connected to our earth, that was lost during that time because chemical farming took its place. You know, we yeah. spray all these toxic chemicals on our food and then expect it to be healthy. It doesn't make any sense. So a lot of the information related to electroculture at that time was lost because of the after post-World War II. And a lot of these books, there's only a couple. There's actually only about like about five or six out there that I've seen. But a lot of the books are very hard to find as well, too, which because they were getting rid of that information during that time so that people would become dependent on either a grocery store or going to the hardware store and buying all those pesticides and spraying them all over their foods so that their soil doesn't work too well, their plants don't grow, and where do they go back to? The grocery store. And you just have this yeah. perpetual loop. And someone asked, would it work if the copper was in the ground or it, does it actually have to be an antenna that's pointing upwards? So you'd want to place the copper into the soil so that it's kind of like it's grounding. And then you want to yeah. place the other part of the copper up into the air Pointing. towards the north. Right? So it's literally draw, drawing down into the ground, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, cool. And um, as you mentioned, you know, we, we obviously look into a lot of these old buildings and spires and and this podcast was pretty much started around that and the whole sort of free energy and what's, what is it all. You've shown a picture of, is it Ohio uh, World's Fair where they have um, an Eiffel Tower? And you suggested that maybe that's, a mega antenna for electroculture. Yes. So when I was researching into that, I fit, I was realizing that, and I'm sure you've done the research as well, but that the Eiffel Tower used to be everywhere, right? Like all yeah. over every part of the world, you know? Yeah. So I thought, well, let's say if you... Still a couple in Asia too, right? Like in uh, Japan and China, I believe. Yes. And then they've built another Eiffel Tower in Vegas. Like they have excuses to build the replicas and they still, they're building them. All. You're right. And then it has become, yeah, a replica. It's, it's nothing close to what it actually was. But yeah, they were found all over. And I thought about it, you know, with all these, 
different antennas that used to be on top of the buildings, those were always the first things they took off the buildings, right? They, when they're doing all this, you know, remodeling, they always take off the antennas. And it always made me think about that. But yeah, I, I would think they would be one gigantic antenna. And if you had, for example, any substances up there, like mercury, you know, or something that can create a spin or anything related to that, you could be just harnessing the atmospheric energy, which is stuff that they were doing in the 1900s. They used to send balloons up into the air, connect a, a, a copper wire to them, and they would yep. harness the atmospheric energy. So those Eiffel Towers could be used in the same fashion for that area. Because if you had a gigantic spire, like you were saying, it could be covering a very large area instead of just obviously a piece of wood and a piece of copper. 